Okay, welcome everyone to the stage live August 2022. Um, we are gonna listen to Sage Intern's experience for this summer. But we, before we start, let me briefly explain what the Sage Journey is all about and how Sage Life fits in the Sage Journey. So Sage Journey is a program whose mission is to inspire and encourage students to explore STEM career for their future. And then we do this by offering summer camps, as you all know, paid internship, professional growth sessions, and many opportunities to connect with professionals who care about you and your future. So Stage Live is part of, of the Stage Journey. It is a we gather online, it is an online gathering of students and volunteers, who students who have attended the summer camp and are curious about the next step in their Stage Journey. It's a way to stay connected with the Sage volunteers and the Sage Live happens every month via Zoom between August and May. And the, copy, the topics that we are gonna cover, that we cover are of in career related, but also um, new exciting topics in science or quantum, like quantum computing, artificial intelligence, machine learning. And we hope this, those topics are of interest for you. So if you have any suggestion, we are really welcome to uh, uh, and open to any suggestion that you have for us. I'm gonna introduce one speaker at a time. And uh, as you know, for all our speakers, we tell you what they do. And also we tell you a little bit about their hobbies and interests. So let's start. Our first speaker today is Anita. Hi, Anita. Thank, welcome. She attended the virtual Sage Camp in 2020 at Slack. She attended Pinole Valley High School in California and is a rising second year college student at Contra Costa College. So when she has free time, Anita likes to garden with her mom and uh, read play and play tennis with her friends okay let's welcome anita duang Freshen. okay can everyone hear me yeah yes okay i'm going to be sharing my slides now uh, can remember. someone who's sharing their slides um, stop sharing for a moment please Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, everyone can see it? Yeah? Okay, great. So, hey, guys. Um, I'm Anita, like Julie just said, and I'm going to be talking about my stage journey. Okay. Okay, so a little bit background before I get into my project. Um, I was in the Linux Coherent Life Source Department, also known as LCLS. And it's also one of the farthest buildings there if you haven't been to Slack before. And the funny thing is I'm the one who commutes like the farthest, like an hour and 30 minutes or so and like two hours going back home. So it's fun. it was funny when we all found out that I was going to the farthest building Speaking of that, I'm also, just because I'm a little bit far, I'm on site at least like twice a week. And on the other days, I usually work remote. Um, I have yeah. a really cool, awesome genius mentor named Alea. I'm not sure if she's here or not. But, and then below I've added um, two photos of the LCLS experimental hall. Um, this is just basically like the outside. And when you walk through the doors, you'll see what's on the right. I don't really come here often. I'm usually in the office building, but it's always nice when I do go. Okay, a little bit of basically what my project is. It's actually, for me, I feel like it's very quite direct. So basically I'm creating, or I'm still 
Um, my internship is still going on, so I'm creating a Python script that reads from a LaCroix oscilloscope by using Caproto. And if it sounds confusing, that's totally okay because in the beginning I had no idea what that was. So it kind of took me a while. Basically like Caproto is a toolkit for building Python program that speaks and channel access. I hope I'm pronouncing this right, EPICS. And it basically stands for Experimental uh, Physics and, and Industrial Control System, which is basically used in laboratories and companies all around the world. And for those who don't really know what a LaCroix oscilloscope is, it's okay. Again, I did not know what this was. So basically my mentor showed me in one of the hutches that I was working in. And it's basically um, a, it displays like a single or repetitive waveform on a screen so that we can all see. And right there is a photo of where I'm basically creating a Python script for. And um, this is more of a up close photo, but from far, like, it's actually really like quite long, but I forgot to add that photo in. So this is hopefully good enough. And from what my mentor told me, it's like very expensive. I think it was like 100K, 200K, like around there. It's very expensive. And I was so scared, like walking, trying to get to it because you kind of have to go a lot under stuff. And I'm not tall. But I was wearing docks at the time and like I had my backpack on and it was just like, oh, I really hope I don't break anything because I'm kind of clumsy at the same time. Okay, uh, basically, like, yeah. This is just what I learned and some skills I've gained along the way so far. So basically, like I said, my project is just a coding project. It's basically a coding project. And I don't know about you guys, but I have little skills of coding. So I was like really worried when my mentor first told me I'm going to be doing a Python programming coding <laughs> Python script. And one of the things that one of the many resources that I have that my mentor provided was a really good coding web, excuse me, website called Code Academy. And I definitely recommend it to those who who feel like they've never done coding and are kind of scared to try, but you know, it's like a really friendly like website for you to learn. So one of the many resources that I wanted that the website has is that you can learn about diff many different um, pro programming languages as such as the Python, JavaScript, et cetera. And some of the resource that's included on the website, it's like, it has projects, reading, quizzes, and a lot of interactive stuff on there yeah and uh, one of the few skills that I've kind of learned about and how to review is like the basics of Linux commands I had like I didn't really know much so it was good that my mentor provided a lot of resources and again I did not know what a LaCroix oscilloscope was so and how it works so I was really glad that my mentor kind of taught me about it and I was actually it was cool to see it in person and while this is not like a technical skill but I wanted to like share with everyone just in case because when I was in high school, I had a really negative mindset of asking questions. So, and this was my first internship. So I would say, don't be afraid to speak up and ask questions because again, everyone is there to help you and support you. How did I find out about this program? Basically, I received an email, email through um, Lloyd in like the end of the May. And this like this cat emoji or me, that's literally what I look like when I received that email. And then, <laughs> Literally, I was in bed, yeah, and I was just like, oh, email, and then um, and then I got on the phone, I received a phone call with Lloyd, and we just kind of talked about what I'm interested in, all that good stuff, and lastly, I sent in my resume, and to be honest, when you guys send in your resume, it's okay if you don't have anything, because again, this is a learning experience, so you know, you're just building up your skills, it's okay. And lastly, I reached out to the other stage girl who decided to take part at Slack, so I reached out to like Chalina and Mira, and I also saw something on Discord. So if I didn't see like a chat on Discord about Chalina talking about it, I probably would not be here right now. So shout out to Chalina and Mira. And of course, other stage girls here. And then my overall internship experience is that everyone was really welcoming and happy to help me from the beginning to the end of my internship. It was nice to be on site for the first time because I'm stage 2020, so I was virtual and I don't really go around where Slack is. The location wise, since I'm in East Bay, so it was like really cool to have like a nice tour. And yeah, and my mentor also gave me a tour around LCLS and it was like, it was so cool to see like all the projects she's done and she's a genius. So if you could recommend or ask for a mentor, I would definitely ask for Alea. And then also just because I live far, I was so grateful to go in around like 1130 because I remember the first day I woke up at like five in the morning and got there around like 
seven or eight ish on the first day so I was really grateful for my mentor and I'm uh, another great experience from this internship is that I became a lot closer with like the other stage interns there so like with Chalina and Mira and I'm so thankful that I got to meet them at this internship because I didn't really know anybody from my stage time and then we also had a stage coffee time with the other with Chalina and Mira and then a two other sage who who were sage girls who were there for a different type of intern it was so cool to meet them excuse me because um they were from like earlier previous age years so that was nice and lastly a huge big thanks to my mentor Alea because she's been very patient with me throughout this whole entire project and still supports me especially since I don't really have a lot of coding experience so I'm really grateful that she's really patient and shout out to her for driving me from one place to another because gas is expensive so I really appreciate that it's not it's not cheap okay now into the good stuff during our internship we also had uh, opportunity to attend the CEO workshops and basically basically the CEO workshops they include like leadership skills that could help our career growth basically how we can become a little bit, for me, it felt like I was a way for me to become a little bit more confident. Um, in our first session, also one of my favorite sessions, we also talked and discussed about effective communication in workspaces. Um, this session include how to communicate with people in workspace about your work and professional goals. Um, just listing a few takeaways, uh, one that I found really important was communicate where you want to go is one discuss when you discuss your goal, make sure to be clear and specific you want, you want, you don't want to be too vague because you want everyone to know why you're there, what your goal is, what your project is, be very direct is what I would recommend. And secondly, secure buy-ins, make sure everyone's on the same page as you. So, you know, you could send an email, you're like, are we on, an example I listed is, are we on track to achieve this goal by this target date? Third, seek an alignment on key metrics. So how to get from one step to another to achieve a project goal. And then you could discuss on prioritization. So basically just listing importance of order. And lastly, uh, have scheduled regular check-ins, such as having one-on-one -on -one meetings to discuss projects and issues you may concern to you. And I really like this last one specifically because, like I said, I was kind of scared to reach out. But after this first section, I felt really confident. So I'll, besides going in on, on site for those two days, so like Tuesdays and Thursdays, I would ask my mentor if we can meet on Zoom. And I feel like I'm really glad that I was in this workshop because I don't think I would have gained the confidence to ask. So I really appreciate that. Thank you, Nita, if you watched this. <laughs> and thank you everyone for listening to my presentation. I hope I hope you guys are ready and excited to see the next stage interns presentation. And thanks again to Alea, my mentor. And thank you, Lloyd, Julia, Danny, and of course everyone who else is everyone who's here in attendance. I really appreciate everyone taking their time of the day to come. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. That was great. That was great. I'm glad you had a good experience. Um, any question for Anita and her experience? Anita, this is Anna from Los Alamos. What would you tell a student that is hesitant about um, applying for an internship? I'm sorry, my mic got cut off. Can you actually uh -oh. say it one more time, please? Uh, what would you tell a student that is hesitant about applying to for an internship? Definitely, I would say just like, uh, go for it. Uh, it's okay if you feel kind of nervous when you're applying. But also, like I said, like reach out to your fellow peers. If you see someone like for me, what I did is I looked at Mira and Chalina and I saw their email. I know it's kind of it's kind of weird. I'm so sorry if that sounded like so weird because I texted Mira like one day before or so. And I was like, I'm so sorry that this is so awkward, but you're doing the internship, correct? And then I was like, and then yeah. And then so just reach out to your peers because you'll also, um, you, you'll know a lot, same as them. And you could be like, oh, we're on the same page and you feel like less nervous, I'd say. And when you're applying, again, like with the resume, it's okay if you don't have anything, just 
send something in and you can if anyone needs help of course ask anyone from stage i'm happy to help too my resume is not perfect but it's still something you know and again this internship is basically for just building your skill so it's okay is then do i read the questions in the chat or yeah if you or, want to yeah sure okay someone i have a general question about internship there is one question what college did you do you attend and what is your major oh basically right now i attend contra costa college and it's a community college so i'm not like i don't attend a four-year like um mira and chilena you'll get into all their good stuff like in a bit i swear to you guys just give me one minute Sorry guys. And Community then, um, this college is, is perfectly yeah, good. It's, it's it's perfect. It's I love it. I it, I'm a lot closer to my um professors, which is nice. And I yeah. I would say that. And then um basically my major right now is mathematics. But when I transfer, I probably would go into mathematics because I really I, I hated math in high school, but then I had a really cool professor last year and Suddenly, I love calculus now. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Someone already answered the chat. So yeah, there is a we general question to... about internship. Yeah, yeah. Um, will I be eligible to join an internship once I graduate high school, or do I need to complete one year of college first? Yes. So we have dif the different lab have, have different requirements, and Lana can take high school students. At Slack, you need to be 18. Um, there is a LBNL that takes uh, high school students. Uh, so it depends on the internship. There are if such a variety of internship. We, you, you can just select the one that uh, actually fits your time, uh, your age range, and uh, keep on following uh, Stage Live because we will have a lot of information about it. And also, you guys are very lucky because you got all these connections of the different national labs, right? So if you live in California, you know, you also have access to internships elsewhere. Um, yes. As Julia said, uh, Los Alamos, the summer before your senior year, you can already apply for an internship. So you don't need to be done with high school. You don't need to have be graduated from high school to apply for an internship. Okay, one more question from Angelina. What was an unexpected challenge you faced during your internship and how did you overcome it? Oh, that's for me, right? Yeah, yes. okay, that's such a great question. So basically um, I'm coding still. And one thing that I, I is still ah, feeling is that like sometimes it's just like there's like a small little error and I'm like I was sit there for like a day or so and I'm like oh my god like what's going on like why is this not working and then um I would this is how I overcome it basically is I would just ask my mentor if she could like also double check too with me and then she'll find like that little small error and then we'll laugh about it that's how I overcome it overcome it and then I'll eat ice cream a little bit later so I could feel better about myself. So sorry. But yeah, it's the truth. It's the truth. Perfect. I would say that. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. And yes, scientists, engineers work in team and nobody is ever alone doing something. You make sure that your, your results, your work is double checked so it's like totally normal to ask for help to ask uh, to reach out to other colleagues so good job anita so i want to add anita one one thing a personal thing so i am an experimentalist and i just moved to a theoretical simulation and modeling organization i tell you uh... we lost anna no <laughs> Anna, we lost you then. The, we wanted to know about that. <laughs> we not wanted to know all the secrets about the organization. You're back now. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe you can write it in the chat. Okay. Oh, I have a quick question for Anita, if that's okay. Yes. 
Sure. Uh, first of all, nice presentation. It was really great to hear about your experience. Thank and you. I, at one point you mentioned hearing something on Discord. I was just curious about how students use that to communicate with each other. Okay, this take back like a long time ago. Like this, twenty tw it was like 2020, way back. Um, actually, I think I joined the Discord kind of late. Like I didn't know anybody, so I didn't know about it until I was in a Zoom call with Loy and I believe someone else from Sage 2020. They're like, you should join the Discord chat. And I don't know if I can show the Discord chat because I, I think I might have to ask other people. So let's not do that, oh, no, but I'll okay. just describe <laughs> it to everyone and everyone could just imagine it. I'm pretty <laughs> sure some of you guys know what Discord is. If not, then it's just basically like a place where students can connect or not just students, but like friends, all that, like just another chatting place. It, I think it's kind of like Slack, if anyone else agrees, like the, it's kind of like that, yeah? It literally almost <laughs> looks like that. But basically, um, someone asked about like the Sage internship. And then I think Chalina, Chino, Chalina, you replied to something and I looked at it and I was like, hmm, maybe I should, you know, ask about it. And one thing that I really enjoy about having the chat is that if there's a stage live or an email that they receive, someone will send it in the chat. So that's how I usually know. So I think that's how, even though I receive an email from Loy, I also um, looked at the chat before I applied to the internship. I hope that helped. I hope that's that, perfect. Yeah, that's Actually, perfect. We, we encourage, so we don't, we are not in that chat. It's all students uh participating in the discord uh i think there are links i think if you want the links you can ask each other and uh, there is a discord uh for all the sage students and we encourage you to be there because yes uh, even if we are not there all the information passed through there as well we know <laughs> and we make sure that actually you share it with each other perfect let's move on to the next speaker Thank you, Anita. Our second speaker is Mira Bhatt, who is a raising second year college students at University of California in Berkeley. During her free time, Mira likes to read science fiction books. Mira, take it away. Okay, let me just share my screen really quick. Okay, can you guys see that okay? Yes. All right. Okay, so this is my end of internship presentation. I ended my internship yesterday, so I'm officially done. And I was an intern in the TID RFAR AEM department this year, and I was a SAGE camper in 2020. How I found out about the program, I was self-studying over the summer and generally just kind of vibing when I got an email from Loy asking about if I had any interest in a DOE internship. So I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. Um, I should do that right now. And I really didn't want this opportunity to pass by. So I reached out to Loy and things got started pretty quickly from there. How my experience was, I thought it was awesome. I, had, I thought it was an invaluable exposure to what like doing research actually means and to the research in the particular group that I was in where everyone works on very vastly different projects. Um, I had an amazing mentor and she really helped me uh, learn a lot about the department, about particle accelerator physics and the stuff that I was working on. And so I appreciate her immensely and it really wouldn't have been the same without her. Um, I learned so much, not just in the skills I'm going to talk about later, but also about Slack and its facilities and all the incredible people that work there. Here's what I learned. So I learned that commuting sucks and I hate it and also how to aggressively pass slow people on the highway because some people are just going like 45 miles an hour for nothing. I also theoretically learned how to avoid the yellow jackets while eating lunch, but just because I know how to do it doesn't mean that I can actually do it. So I had a few successes, but mostly a lot of failures. Um, what I actually learned um, in terms of soft skills, I had to practice my organization skills a lot while I was working on my internship. Um, I had a lot of different commitments to manage, such as meetings and things like that, and also the incredible number of data files and scripts that I was just spitting out on a daily basis. Um, I also had to practice communicating results. I got better at this as the internship went on, but there's still a ton of room for improvement. Um, part of the communicating results skill was used in my presentations that I had every week. My department had 14 interns, which is kind of a lot. And so every week there was a meeting where the interns would present on what they had been doing over the last week. And summarizing all of your work in a week is both 
stressful and also kind of discouraging because you see kind of how much and how little you did in a week. I also got to practice my communication with my mentor. Specifically for me, I think like Anita said, <laughs> I have some difficulties asking for help and I'm having difficulty with the task. And so I included a screenshot of one of my messages in Slack, which was not helpful at all, right? I just said, I'm drowning in error messages as an example of like what not to do because this is so incredibly unhelpful and it doesn't help my mentor help me at all. And so as my internship progressed, I was able to like ask more specific questions and actually get help without feeling too embarrassed about it. Uh, what I actually learned in terms of my technical skills, um, I learned the basics of particle, acceler uh, particle accelerator physics and accelerator making, specifically extremely tiny accelerators. That's what the group I was working in was working on. And so I studied the, the design and components, the fabrication, the tuning, and the running. I think I know the SAGE campers studied this too during camp. And I also got a lot of glimpses into the projects and techniques used by the other scientists and interns in my group which were, like I mentioned before, like vastly different. We had people working on microscopy, quantum computing, and then like I was working on accelerator physics. So what I did was I used two pieces of software. The first one is this one on the left. This is GPT or the general particle tracer, and it enables you to essentially track the trajectories of individual particles under specific conditions. So like this one is using a quadruple magnet to focus the electron beam. And I also got to learn how to use MATLAB, which I had also never used before. And this is just like a script writing software. So I, what I did with both of these was I did a lot of data processing and analysis, and I got to work with the biggest TXT files I've ever seen in my entire life, which had about 1.5 million plus lines, which might be like rookie numbers to some of you, but to me, that was absolutely gigantic. And the sheet just looks like this, it's a whole bunch of numbers. So what I did was I took spreadsheets like that and all the numbers in them, from two separate programs. This is HFSS and this is GPT. HFSS is like a 3D modeling software and then GPT is like what I said before. And I stuck them together into like a single coherent figure. And this enabled visual visualization of how the particles were be behaving inside of the accelerator and how they're interacting with the different structures there. So these two are two different um, deliverables that I worked on. So this is one type of accelerator and this is another kind. So over here, you, these dots are the particles moving through. And then these are like the actual accelerator itself, like the structure. And then I analyzed the energies that were coming out at each point in time. Oh, I also got to work on some optimization. So I looked at the field in the accelerator cavities and then I like tweaked it to maximize energy being imparted to the particles. So this is the graph that I worked on for that, um, where I kind of narrowed it down over here to see if I can get this peak as high as I could. Moving on to Miss CEO, um, as I needed, I think she introduced what this was all about. And the topic that I'm going to be talking about is networking, also known as forging relationships with strategic allies. One of the things that I really liked about this topic was that it addressed a lot of my concerns about networking pretty directly, specifically feeling like you're being opportunistic or that your interactions feel very forced or fake. I feel like this really helped me engage with the material wealth so I could really connect to it personally. And it also helps um, present how to go about these interactions and like very genuinely. And so a lot of my worries were really assuaged by this. So one of the things that the talk went over was the types of people that are in a network. And these include your mentors, which are more of like a casual sounding board versus your sponsors, which are like a personal advocate. They're the people that give you recommendations and help you move up and give you opportunities. Um, as for, sorry, I need to move this thing out really quick. How to arrange a meeting or conversation. One thing that you can try to do is to have a very specific, reasonable request in mind. The more general it is, the harder it's gonna be for the person you're talking to, to want to say yes, or also help you out. As you saw with my message, I'm drowning in error messages. And you said also, also know why you're reaching out to this person specifically. Um, so like I said earlier, generic emails are not the best and doing your background research into this person is a necessity. Next is the follow-up. I have historically been extremely stressed about sending follow-up emails. I'm not sure why, I just always worry so much about what to say. But, but after listening to this presentation, it's actually not that hard. You just, instead of crying like I do, or like the connection, peter off into nothing, you just write an email about how the person's advice benefited you or impacted some action that you took, and then just thank them, and that's it. It's so easy, oh my God. And so that pretty much wraps up my presentation. I want to encourage you all to apply. The SAGE internship for me was an immense opportunity that enabled me to work at a top research facility with incredible people on an awesome project and get paid. 
So I honestly can't recommend it enough. I had an amazing time and I would absolutely do it again. And thank you for listening. I hope the recent Sage alumni had a great time at camp. Thank you, Mira. That was great. Thank you for your presentation. And I see there are already some questions. At least. Yeah, so I see someone asking if I already had coding experience or did I learn during internship? Yes, yeah, so I actually had pretty much zero coding experience. I had done like robotics in sixth grade, if that counts. And I'd written like two programs in Scratch, if that also counts. But pretty much all the coding that I did during my internship was, which was like, more legit coding in like the C language or the MATLAB. I learned that on the job. So I did a lot of Googling. I read a lot of documentation and then I picked it up while I was there. Um, any tips for those that want to learn how to code is to Google stuff and read the documentation. There's a lot of support, especially for popular programs like MATLAB. And any question that you have, someone has probably asked it already. So there's just so much available out there. And it's also to not be daunted by it. Like it sounds really, really hard to pick up. There's all these like little things you have to keep track of, but it's, it's actually really manageable and you can do it. Um, can I share some tips you learned about interaction from the CEO? Um, I'm not really sure what interaction means. Um, so if you maybe yeah, that, attending, attending Mrs. This Miss CEO um, classes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So about interaction, I think maybe this is connecting to what I said about your interactions with people you're trying to network feeling like very forced. So what I learned is that if you genuinely want to talk to someone because you think they're cool and you want to learn from them, then your interaction isn't going to be forced or fake because you genuinely want to get to know them. So something I learned from that is to look for people you actually want to learn from, not someone who's purely strategic, because then it's going to be really difficult. And then you're not really being fair to either of you. So just find someone you think is really cool and then go from there. Is there a reason you chose to commute to Slack instead of Internet Berkeley Lab? I actually live closer to Slack than Berkeley Lab. Um, I go to college in Berkeley, but I live down closer to San Jose. So Slack was actually a lot closer. So practical, practical reason. Good choice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mira. Good job. Okay, if there are no other questions for Mira. Good. Okay. Chalina, you're Wong. You're you're on. Our third speaker is Chalina Wong. Chalina attended the University of California or UC in San Diego, majoring in biomedical engineering. During high school, Chalina invited Sage volunteers to speak at an event in her school, which she helped organize. So thank you very much for that. And it was about women in, women in STEM. Uh, Chalina in her free time enjoys practicing kendo. Let's welcome Chalina. Right. Thanks, Julia, for the introduction. Um, wow, I almost forgot about that one high school event. Um, but yeah, all right, let's get into it. So let's see. Yeah, there we go. All right. So if you're wondering what kendo is, I honestly just wanted to flex this picture. Um, it's like Japanese fencing. Uh, picked it up in college. So if you guys get a chance to do it, highly recommend doing so. All right. So I'm going to dive straight in. Um, it's going to be a lot of like kind of technical uh, aspects to this. So feel free to just drop questions in the chat. Um, yeah. So. I interned at SSRL, which is the synchrotron or circular particle accelerator at Slack. Uh, my mentor is Daria. I think she's in here somewhere. Um, yeah. So one thing we do at SSRL is macromolecular crystallography, which is basically making crystals out of big molecules like proteins and using those crystals uh, to determine the structure of the proteins. And how we do that is using the x-rays from the synchrotron at, S at SSRL, shooting them through the crystals, um, and then the X-rays will diffract or like scatter the electrons, um, which will be caught by you know the diffractor, and then we can stick that into a computer software or computer program, kind of reverse engineer that, get the electron density map, which we can um, stick through I think another software 
to get the atomic model. Uh, so that's actually what I did. Um, first couple of weeks, just kind of followed Dario around um, and grew my uh, own lysosome crystals or lysosome crystals. Then we actually took like a loop, fished them out, stuck them into an experimental hutch, and then ran uh, or shot a couple of x-rays through them to get this diffraction pattern. Um, so that's pretty cool. Again, this is something I actually did not know like about until I got to Slack and Dario just walked me through everything. So shout out to Dario for that. And uh, oh, this previous example was uh, using like a single crystal and then shooting extra to that single crystal. But if you have like really small crystals, like micro crystals, um, we can use an injector and just spray a bunch of them into the beam. So this is where my side project actually came in. Uh, this current setup, we use like a petri dish to block the camera uh, because the ejector would spray the crystals directly down. Uh, but this is kind of not a great solution because not only is the petri dish just kind of sitting there and it could be easily knocked off, but the uh, liquid also just kind of pulls there and blocks the camera after a while. So what we did um, was using CAD or computer-aided modeling uh, to design some sort of camera cover. Then we stuck that CAD model into the slicer uh, which basically just converts the CAD model into a file that's uh, the 3D printer accept, and then we 3D printed uh, that camera cover and tested it out. And then, of course, um, a lot of times testing testing showed that the camera cover didn't work. So you know, failure is part of the process. You just repeated it again. So, a couple of camera designs. We got two at the end. One of them is kind of like a tilted cover slip, which is you know one of those glass things that you stick under a microscope. Um, it's supposed to drain into some tubing uh, through this hole at the end. And then another one is this off-center petri dish holder. The idea is to kind of rotate the petri dish so the liquid that pulls at the end uh, gets moved and then you get a clear spot for the camera. Uh, so yeah, here are the 3D printed camera covers that I've gotten so far and testing is in progress to see if these two will work. Hopefully it will. Yeah. And then my main project is actually putting this microspectrometer into an anaerobic chamber. So a microspectrometer, there's a couple of names for it. I'm just call it, gonna call it a microspec, is something that shoots light through a sample. And then depending on how much light is absorbed or transmitted or like passes through the sample, you can sort of figure out the chemical or the identity of that chemical compound. Um, but we wanna do it, what we want to do is stick this into the anaerobic chamber. Anaerobic chamber is um, just like a glove box that doesn't have oxygen inside of it, replaces it with like nitrogen and uh, hydrogen. So if you have crystals with like iron, iron ions in them, uh, they don't react to oxygen. Uh, the current setup is a little too big to fit into the antechamber of this anaerobic chamber. Uh, so back to CAD or computer aided modeling. Um, had to figure out a couple of designs of how to make the pieces small enough to fit into the chamber. Uh, so this is what I've been spending most of my time on recently. Uh, what is it? Yeah, changed up like a couple of designs from here. Uh, got some feedback from Dario, um, a mentor. So you know, feedback's very important. Got some feedback from uh, her boss, actually, my supervisor that we settle on. I think we actually might need to have some tweaks for it. Um, oh, internet connection is unstable. Hopefully I'm still coming through. Yes, okay. we can hear you. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So this is hopefully the final CAD model. We are going to build it, hopefully starting next week. Yeah, we have all the parts. So that's exciting. Um, so the Miss CEO topic that I actually chose or I'm gonna talk about is time management. So if you saw the previous, uh, you know, previous slides, there's a lot of things that I did during this internship. And it was like, a, oh yeah, show up nine to five. Um, here's a couple of tasks, do what you gotta do. Uh, so I had to figure out how to schedule my day to uh, get everything done without losing my mind. Uh, one thing we learned is that there's like two types of works or, you know, there's probably more than these two types of work, but uh, it's easy to sort most tasks into these two two categories. One is shallow work, you know, no thoughts, head empty, really easy, repetitive tasks, um, like responding to emails that you don't really need a lot of creative thought for, uh, but it's productive enough, enough to get that sweet, sweet dopamine rush uh, versus deep work. Uh, so that's examples are like writing an essay, drawing, you know, creating those 
CAD models, learning a new language, really stretches your creativity. But it's um, definitely something I feel like you can brag about more and that your teacher or your boss will also uh, appreciate more. Um, so the thing about deep work is that there's about like, or according to some scientific studies, you can get like maybe max four hours a day of deep work in. Uh, so you got to really learn how to prioritize that deep work. So for me, uh, I built this little sort of routine um, where I would block off three or four hours in the afternoon because, you know, morning I'm either like sleepy or I'm like waiting for lunch. Uh, so in the afternoon, make sure that my laptop, my laptop charger is plugged in, got water, my phone is face down, and then I got lo-fi hip hop playing because, you know, music got to sit the yeah, mood. Um, um, so I recommend that you try, give this a try kind of uh, see where in your schedule you can block off a couple of hours uh, and really get that productive deep work in. Yeah, so this is me, my mentor. Um, again, Daria is awesome. Uh, and here's a couple of highlights. I'd say number one, definitely apply. Apply to as many opportunities as you can. Anything that's remotely interesting, even if you think you're underqualified or it's like, oh, I don't know if I wanna go into this in the future because it's all a learning experience and uh, Nothing, nothing bad really comes from applying. You can always accept it or turn it down later. So definitely give it a try. Uh, number two, use your network because that's what I did to get this internship. It's kind of, um, actually I went to a Sage Life like this where they talked about internships. Uh, kept emailing Loy and then another recruiter from Slack um, saying, hey, uh, you have any internship opportunities for the summer? And eventually I did get one. So shout out to Loy and Julia. Um, and then of course, uh, mentors, I kind of get why everyone is like, oh, mentors are great. Get yourself a mentor after this internship. Because Daria, like, not only did she teach me a bunch of like on the job knowledge that I needed, like a uh, macromolecular crystallography, but she also asked me the hard question, hitting questions like, what does bioengineering mean to you? Or, like, what do you want to do in your future? What labs do you want to get into at UCSD? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. But now that you asked me, I've got to think about it. So definitely if you can get yourself a mentor. It doesn't have to be at a job either. It can be like your teacher, I don't know, your parents, stuff, siblings, older siblings, stuff like that. And then last one, fake it so you make it. Because if you suffer kind of from imposter syndrome from like me, or you're scared of failure, just, just fake it so you make it. Because honestly, everyone that you think is like super qualified, they don't know what they're doing either. So, you know, we're all, we're all in this together. Um, yeah. I think that's about it. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Jelena. You told everyone our secret. <laughs> Thank you. That was a great presentation. Okay. Do you have any questions for Jelena? Okay, one is, what is my favorite part of the internship or assignments? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think the camera cover was actually pretty interesting because, um, again, it was like a side project. So something my mentor kind of looked at and was like, hey, Shalina, you can, you can try that out. And I was like, say less. Uh, and I've had a little bit of experience with uh, creating CAD models and 3D printing stuff, but I haven't really had a chance to do it in like outside of robotics because I did the robotics in high school. So it's nice to just get back in there and also impress, um, impress my mentor as well as like my boss with uh, what I could do actually. Yeah. Uh, all right. What did I do in high school that I got you interested in my major? Uh, robotics, definitely robotics. Um, yeah, if you guys ever get a chance to check out FRC, first robotics competition, highly recommend it. Um, it's definitely an experience that defined high school for me. Um, what else is there? Yeah, I was in like the mechanical engineering division of robotics. So that's why I learned like, oh, here's, He's like, oh, maybe I want to do like engineering, want to do CAD in the future. And, but I also was like, what if, what if I want to do a little bit of medicine? 
So I kind of combined the two and stuck with bioengineering. Okay. There is so much that we can learn from internship besides the purely technical part. Could I describe what else I learned? Ooh, good question. Um, I think I learned, what is it? How do I phrase this? I think I, it's like adults aren't scary. <laughs> so there was like this time that um, for, uh, was it the micro spec setup? Uh, my mentor was like, hey, do you want to show this to uh, Ina, like basically our boss? Uh, and I was like, sure, because she got she's got it cleared off. I show up, and it turns out there's like two other mechanical engineers. And it turns out this is a, it's like a tech meeting. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm qualified to be here. Uh, but they're all like really impressed with what I did. And they just offered a like, couple of critiques, but nothing like major. So I would say, yeah, just, just fake it so you make it. And uh, when you make it, <laughs> you make it. Uh, wow, that was, sorry, that was, that was bad. Cringe. <laughs> um, yeah, just don't, don't be too scared of people. They're all like, they're, to, they're just there to learn. They're not there to judge you. Oh, and then another one, do I go into the lab every day or were, was I in a more hybrid environment? Uh, I went I went on site pretty much every day, uh, just in case um, I needed to say for like macromolecular crystallography, that's something that you need to be in person to like grab the crystals for and like stick into the machine for. Um, and then for CAD, even though you can do CAD just like complete from your computer, I would find a lot of times I'd get out of my seat and like run to the other building to get like a measurement or like a part. Uh, because I forget to take measurements of everything. Another one. Yes, thank you for mentioning Kendo. Um, yeah, so I mentioned I started Kendo in college. What did I pick it up? And do I go to competitions or is it more of a hobby? Um, I picked it up because during COVID, the recreation classes at UCSD were free. And I was just like, oh, swords, that's really cool. So I picked up, uh, or I, I chose, I enrolled in uh, kendo and fencing, actually. Uh, it turns out I actually like kendo a lot more than fencing. So I just continued it, even as they started charging with classes again. Um, I actually do go to competitions. I haven't gone to any this summer because I've been lazy. But uh, last spring, I went to a couple in UCLA, or a couple in LA. There's like one in UCLA. Um, and, you know, there's local ones around San Diego. There's no other questions. Thanks again for listening and asking a bunch of questions. Hit me up on, uh, what is it? If you're on Discord. the Discord, hit me up on Discord. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Facebook or ask me for my email. I got you. Thank you, Chalina. A round of the applause. <laughs> okay. So, the SAGE internship started actually this year as a program. And uh, Chalina, Anita, and Mira were our three interns at SLAC. And there were two interns as well at LANO, Los Alamos National Lab in New Mexico. One SAGE intern, unfortunately, she couldn't be here. Raya, tell me, Anna, how do you pronounce it? Rayanon Velarde. Exactly, because she's moving. She's moving to college this exact moment. So Rosaline, her mentor, kindly accepted to talk about her internship and tell us a little bit about what happened this summer. All right. Hi, everybody. First, I want to say I've really enjoyed the presentation so far. They've all been very impressive. It's great to hear about everybody's different experiences. And so I'm going to tell you guys a little bit today about my experience working with Rhiannon Villarde. And yeah, as mentioned, she's currently moving to Las Cruces, New Mexico to start school at New Mexico State University. So I'm going to share just a couple of slides here. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Rayanne's SAGE internship. And first of all, my name is Rosalind Rael, 
and I was one of her three advisors. I work at Los Alamos National Lab in the Computational Physics Division. I also, um, and Rayanna, this is Rayanna, and she gave me permission to share her picture and just give a brief introduction about her. She just graduated from Pohake Valley High School this year and is starting at New Mexico State as a freshman. And her summer project title was exploring manufacturing data to improve production processes. So we looked at several different data sets this summer. And in addition to working with me, Rhiannon had two other co-mentors as well. One of them was Gauri Srinivasan, and she was she's the deputy division leader for physics here at Los Alamos. And also she worked with Lisa Moore, who works in the a statistics group here at Lanel as well. So she had three people <laughs> she got to work with this summer. And we worked together for about nine weeks in a hybrid format. So Rhiannon would come to uh, come on site to Lanel about two to three days per week. And we started out by setting some goals for the summer. Um, Rhiannon had some prior programming experience, but was new to Python. And that was what we were planning to use to explore the data sets. And I will also say that the manufacturing data sets we were considering and the process the whole project was based on was something related to what we're, uh, the staff members are actually working on at the lab as well. So she's contributing in, in a bunch of different ways to our work as well. And we really appreciated that about working with her. So her first two weeks were spent kind of getting familiar with Python. So she did an online Python tutorial for the first couple of weeks and she was learning how to use Jupyter Notebooks, getting familiar with some of the packages in Python and with the ultimate goal of doing some data analysis. And as many of you have probably experienced, uh, it's one thing to do a tutorial to get your hands dirty with the code, but when you really start getting into a project is when you really start learning, um, learning, learning how to, you know, use the code and really, really gain the skills that you need to do some real work, real world work. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so after she did the tutorial, we dove into a data set that came from a copper wire cable manufacturing process. The data contained information about uh, failures that happened in the manufacturing process, including information about the machine, about the operators, and about the dates. And so she got to look for correlations between all of these things. And she learned how to read in data into Python, do some statistics, manipulate the data, and really start creating some cool plots or visualizations, which are important to telling the story about the, about the process you're interested in. And finally, we got into a more complex data set that came from a pharmaceutical manufacturing process. And so I'll, I'll point out that these data sets are all from very different kinds of processes, but the goal in the end is very similar. You wanna look at what's happening. Are there things that correlate that can tell you how to improve those processes in the end? And so that was the goal of the project. So she looked at the pharmaceutical data, looking for correlations between raw materials, processes, and the final product quality. And this involved making hundreds of correlation plots. So she got really familiar with <laughs> doing visualization in, in Python and really thinking through what relationships were important and not important. And the final product was a report written in the form of a scientific paper. We met in person weekly, but I check in with, with Rayanne in most days, either uh, by email or by phone. And early on, we also discussed um, some professional development goals that she might have. And, and Rayanne said she was interested in, in um, developing her resume skills as one, of those, as one of those things. So we dedicated a couple of meetings to really going over uh, how to write a, a nice looking resume and uh, she was also able to attend a workshop at Lanel on that, and we were able to give her some good feedback on it. And uh, most, week, most weeks when we met, we would check in on the goals that we set at the beginning and make sure we were making progress. I also wanted to make sure she felt like she was getting everything she wanted to out of the, out of the project. And, and uh, 
she said she did. <laughs> so hopefully she said she had a good experience and I definitely enjoyed working with her as well. And as a mentor, I appreciated the mentor training sessions provided by Sage as well. So it was nice to have, you know, that extra experience learning about um, some things that are important as a mentor. And finally, as students, your honest feedback really helps us as mentors too. So please do not hesitate to let us know what we can do better or what, you know, if there is anything that you didn't get out of an experience that you would have liked to it's, it's really great if you can share that with us as well, because we're always trying to, to do better and do and you know, help you out, gain the experience that you want and the professional development that you want as well. So all in all, I had a, as a mentor, I had a great experience working with the, the SAGE program with Rhiannon and you know, I'd highly recommend being a mentor and I would love to have more students in the future. If there's any questions that I can answer, as someone who was a mentor, I'd be more than happy to as well. Yes. Thank you, Rosaline. And it was, it, it's actually great to have a mentor that tells the story. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. I'm sure Brian had a great time. And uh, Thank you to her as well for letting us tell her story. Do you have any question for Rosaline? What do you think is the most challenging part about being a mentor? The most challenging part about being a mentor, um, there, there are many things in part, you know, really, understanding and trying to meet the goals of the student, it's really important to be communicative from the very beginning. And so just trying to set up uh, a plan for the whole summer to make sure the student gets the most out of it. It's gonna be different depending on who you work with because you know students have different personalities and so do, so do mentors. And so it's just a process of getting to know each other. I wouldn't say that's um, it's not always challenging, but it's it's just something that takes some energy and some work and and hopefully you have mentors and, and it's important for interns to understand that as well. We're we're kind of trying to trying to do the best we can and learn as we go as well. There is another question. Do interns only work with the mentor or do they collaborate with other scientists? Well, in, in my case. Uh, my student had had three mentors. She primarily worked with me, but her other two mentors would meet with her occasionally as well. So she did get to get input from more than one person. Um, and I think it depends on whether you're in more of an, an experimental lab kind of a, a situation, or also in our case, we were mostly, mostly everything was done on the computer. So it was mostly online and, um, and there, if there were opportunities to, to introduce Rayanne into other people. I definitely took those opportunities, but she really worked directly with myself and her two other mentors. But I think the experience can differ across different labs and different internships and experiences. It also depends on age. Different laboratories um, allow uh, minors to do certain type of work and not other type of work, for example. So uh, when I worked with, when I had students uh, that were um, in college, so they, they were above 18, it was easier to bring them into the experimental areas, radiological areas, work with chemicals and things like that, right? But with minors, there's a law that say, you know, that tells you what you can or you cannot do. <laughs> and, uh, and I think that, um, I praise the mentors that chose to embrace those students because they go out of their way to make sure they find a project that can be mutually beneficial. And that's why maybe you have heard, you know, uh, uh, Ryan um, was working on more programming, computer, and so on at Los Alamos as well. Uh, a lot of the mentors have offices in place where the student might not be able to access. So this collaboration of having several mentors 
allows the student to always have access to a human physically possible, right? So, um, you know, when you get a mentor, just keep in mind that, you know, they go out of their way to pick you and embrace you and, and, and make sure you get the best out of your summer. Thank you, Mira and Chilina, to share your that you shared your um, experience in the chat. So thank you for doing that. Um, just like a last thing, since we are talking about mentors, how do mentors choose their students? Rosalind, do you want to give it or Anna? Yeah. So Rosalind, how did you hear about those students? I heard a bit about Rhiannon through Anna, <laughs> actually. Uh, she uh, really put uh, folks' names out there to a lot of the different networks at Los Alamos National Lab. And that made it easy for me as a scientist to connect with somebody. Uh, there was a name put out there and she'd had some prior experience. I think it was a summer program at the, at the lab. And so that's how I found her. We looked at her resume and her cover letter and saw that she had uh, some interests that align with what we wanted to do, even though she didn't have a lot of experience, that's okay because this was this, this uh, internship was supposed to be a learning, a learning experience. But we saw that she had interests that were aligned with our project, and so we reached out to her, and she was interested in joining us. And you all, Sage students, you're you're lucky because you because you attended the camps and, and so on you have access to a network of people to reach out i don't know in the other labs but in los alamos mentor you know the internships are mentor driven so you you send your resume and then the a mentor needs to go through all the resumes and pick a student right well if you're a sage student and you contact your your pis in the lab well, Julia, you know, uh, myself and others or JP or whatever, we are going to make a very strong effort to match you with a mentor, right? Uh, this year at Los Alamos, we had 10 students from past summer physics camp for young women and we helped place them all, right? And past years, we did the same thing. Uh, if you don't let us know, then you are <laughs> one fish in the pond. But if you let us know, we can help you. So that's the communicating effort. And it, it needs to be driven by you. We are, you know, you apply for the internship and you let us know that you apply for an internship at Lano. And then we help you, uh, hook you with a, with a mentor. And then the magic happens. Thank you, Anna. Yes, there are a lot of internship around and a lot of students that apply. Um, if you let us know that you are applying to an internship at the National Lab, we can sponsor you. And uh, uh, it's not something unusual. It's something that happens all the time. And uh, we know you. So we can certainly say that you are interested and, uh, and uh, you will benefit from the experience. And... Somia, you ask, are the internship all through the year or just summer? Summer through the year, some are only for summer. Uh, there are certainly internship uh, for the fall, for spring, and uh, yes, there are internship all year around. Um, Suli and CCI internship uh, from the Department of Energy are both summer and fall. Uh, we need to, we, you need to make sure that you apply way ahead. So uh, that's why there are some, uh, there is a, at least one um, YouTube video about internship on the Sage YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, you can also find a lot of information on the website. But you can also come to the laboratory, yes. let's say Livermore or Los Alamos or Slack or whatever as a summer intern. And you make such an impression yes. to your mentor that your mentor wants to keep you. So even if you came in the summer as a SAGE student for the summer only, 
then every time you're on vacation, Christmas, spring break, next summer, they wouldn't want you back. So um, ending an internship in very good standing, it's good for you. First of all, in your resume, you're gonna write the names of your mentors very likely. And uh, next time you apply for an internship, you know, people will know each other. You know, science world is a small world, right? So they might call Rosalind or JP or whatever. Hey, how did so-and-so do in the internship? So that's something that we need to mention, but make sure if you're an intern, you do the right thing when the internship ends. If they are deliverable, if you, you know, return everything you were supposed to return and stuff like that. So I was, I went out for lunch with two interns. Um, none of them were a sage interns when they were interns at the lab from past summer physics camp. And, um, and they, they are going to California and the other one, I forget where she's going, but their mentor said, we want you back. When will you be able, so these interns that are gonna move to California next summer, will have a job in Los Alamos where their family lives. Hello, I think that's a plus. So they don't need to look elsewhere. They can come back home, stay at home, save money, uh, get paid and continue exploring experiences. And not because you had a mentor one time is that you need to stick with that mentor or that topic over the years. You can switch, right? You have this connection. So this student work in the material science group for two summers as an intern. And now she was establishing the connections to going to the biochem. So, you know, it's the magic happens when you reach out onto those networks. Thank you, Anna. And uh, there are some links in the chat that I suggest you open and uh, uh, click. So you can explore different possibilities in different national labs. Uh, and yes, there are uh, upcoming internship for high school students. I think Elena has a one for local high school students in Livermore as well. And right. Jen? Yeah. And I want to also mention if you're, um, if you're going into an engineer career, at least here in Los Alamos, there are many programs that allow you to, you know, once you graduate from engineering, come work and then further your education while you have a job, right? And that's farther down the line. But, um, I don't know, Rosalind, do you, are you, or Andrea, are you aware of those engineering options? Uh, so I've heard of some of them, but I'm not too in tune with what they are specifically. Okay, so. Um, and certainly if uh, they are interested in engineering, they, they can write to uh, my uh, mm -hmm. info at mysejourney.org and uh, we can reach out and let you know all the information. Mm -hmm. We want to be specific. We want to give you the right information. So, just write it down. We'll get back to you on 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 this with with all the information you need. Mm -hmm. Make sure you are specific. You ask the question. You tell us your age, what you're interested in, and uh, we can try to tailor the information for your specific need. Okay. Well, I'll, again, a big. Round of applause to all the speakers that told us our experience. Uh, good luck with your restart, school, college, and uh, keep in touch. There's, there, you will receive an email for another Sage Live next month. And uh, in the meantime, write us if you, if you have any question. Everyone.